Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the speed square. Let's get started. All right, guys. So one of the most common things that people will use a speed square for is simply to make a straight line on a two by four or whatever it is that they need to cut. So in order to do that, you just butt your speed square uh, tight up against your workpiece and just strike a line as I just did. Um, you can also use this to mark 45 degree lines, same method, just hold your speed square tight against your workpiece and strike a line. So now you have a perfectly straight 90 degree angle cut and then you also have a 45 degree cut as well. All right, so another thing you can do with your speed square is to use it as a saw guide. So let's say you have a mark here and you wanna make sure that you get that cut perfectly straight. Well, you can just line your saw up with that mark and you can hold your speed square in place and make that cut. Now, you can hold this with your hand. That's typically how I do it, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then you can just use um, a spring clamp like this one and that'll hold it in place as well. So we'll go ahead and make this cut. And as you can see, it held it in place perfectly. Now, this part of your speed square is called a scribe bar, and it's used for making scribe lines across whatever material you're working with. So let's say you've got this two by four here and you need to rip it down to two inches. Well, all you have to do is take your pencil, put it in this notch right here for two inches, and you can slide your speed square down the entire length of the board and you're gonna have a perfect uh, two inch mark all the way down the length of your two by four. Now you can also use your speed square to mark angles on your two by four uh, that you can then take to your miter saw and cut those out. So let's say you wanna cut a 30 degree angle on this piece of material. Well, you butt your speed square up against your material and you wanna find uh, 32 degrees on this protractor side. So you'll just count it out 30, 31, 32. That 32 mark, the 32 degree mark, you're gonna line that up with the same edge uh, of your two by four that your pivot point is on. So we're just gonna rotate that out, keep your pivot uh, point flush against the material. And when you get there to 32 degrees, you just mark your line right here. And now you have a 32 degree mark on your material. Now your speed square is also going to be used whenever you're cutting roof rafters, whether that's common rafters or hip and valley rafters, you can use the speed square to lay those out. So for the common rafters, you're going to reference this row of numbers where it says common. And for your hip and valley, you're going to reference these numbers, the hip and valley. So let's say you were laying out some roof rafters for a 612 pitch roof. Again, you want to put your speed square flush against your material, and then you're gonna pivot it. So we set a 612, so our six is right here. We want that mark to be at the edge of this board, the same edge that your pivot point is at. So we're gonna rotate that out, and then we're gonna make our mark. And that's, that's the mark for a 612 pitch. If you wanted to do an 812, it's the same, same idea. You find your eight, get your pivot point, where you need it to be, rotate that out to where that hash mark for the eight is parallel with the edge of this board, and you mark on this side. That's an 812 pitch. Now, if you were doing hip, and, hip or valley, it'd be the same, same idea. So 612 for your hip. Uh, we're gonna rotate that out. The six right here for your hip and valley rafters, and we're gonna mark it just like that. Now, another cool feature of the speed square is this ruler right here and that's stepped off in quarter inch increments so from the edge of your speed square to that that spot right there that circle that's one inch you have an inch and a quarter inch and a half inch and three quarter two inches and so on and so this is really helpful uh, when you're laying something out so let's say um, you've got a stud that's going to go right here and you need to lay, I don't know, two or three studs in this location. Well, what you can do is just mark it from here, inch and a half, 
because that's how thick your 2x4s are generally. And then strike you a line, another inch and a half. Strike you a line, and now you have locations for, well that's two studs. Um, we'll do it again, inch and a half. And now you've got a layout for three studs. So this ruler is definitely handy for things like that. Also, the top side of your speed square has a ruler on it as well. And this one, this is a seven inch speed square. So that's gonna be about seven inches from end to end. We also have a 12 inch speed square. Um, for the most part, you're gonna use a six inch, at least, I mean a seven inch, that's typically what I'm using. I don't often need a 12 inch speed square, but it's good to have one hand just in case you do. Now another thing you can do with your speed square is mark out your bird's mouth cut for your rafters. And the way you can do that is by making use of this diamond right here. Now not all the speed squares are gonna have this diamond. Some of them like this are just gonna have these marks right here. So that's for three and a half inches. But the way you would do it is let's say you have a roof with a 512 pitch and we'll just make a mark for that. And you wanna put a bird's mouth on it. Well, what you would do is flip this over. The line that you made for your, your rafter for the 512 pitch, you wanna run that right through the center of this diamond. And you wanna have your pivot point uh, mounted or pushed flush against your, your two by four. So you can see this, this line is running right through that, through that diamond. And then you just make a mark. And now you have your layout for your bird's mouth. So similarly with the one that does not have the diamond but has a three and a half inch hash mark right there, you would just do the same thing. So you would run your line through the three and a half inch mark, get your pivot point, uh, get your pivot point flush up against your working material and make that line and that's going to give you a perfect bird's mouth layout so you can cut this one out and then use this rafter as a template for the rest of them now another thing you can do with your speed square is to use it to make sure things are actually square so if you were going to frame this up this is just a scrap piece that i cut but if you were going to fasten this board to this bottom plate you would want to make sure it's square before you do so. So you can use it to make sure it's square. If you use your speed square, you can see I'm trying to wiggle it back and forth. There's no play in it whatsoever. If this board was leaning slightly, you're going to see your speed square is going to rock. And that means that this, what you're trying to frame is not square. So you want to bring this back in. Make sure you don't have any wiggle or very minimal wiggle, depending on what you're working with and you just use this to check for square. Now you can use this if you're uh, framing walls or doing any kind of woodworking. You always wanna make sure that whenever you're framing something that it's as square as it can possibly be. So another thing I like to use my speed squares for is for truing up my saws before I start any work. Uh, a lot of times my miter saw is in and out of the back of the truck, um, taking it to job sites. It, it gets banged around quite a bit, so I always like to make sure uh, that I zero it out before I start any work and I use my speed square to do that. So let me show you how that's done. So essentially all I'm doing is dropping the blade down and I want to see if it's actually square or not. And as you can see, I hope you can see, um, the speed square is touching the blade at the top but it's not at the bottom. And so that's telling me that this blade is sitting at an angle and we, and we need to square that up. So what we'll do is we'll just bump the saw over, unlock it, bump it over, check it again. We're getting close. Give it a few more hits. Back the other way a little bit. And you can see we're pretty good there. Uh, so that's what I do, then I'll lock this down. You can also use it to check for square here. 
and we're sitting pretty good here so i'm not going to fool with that but that's something else that you can do with your speed square you can use that on miter saws table saws or circular saws all right so the last thing i want to show you guys is how to find an existing angle with your speed square so right here we've got a mock-up for um, a roof rafter set up and i want to show you how you can find the pitch of a roof using a speed square and a torpedo level so you want to put your speed square on the rafter or the roof itself whatever you're working with and put your torpedo level right on top you see we've got our pivot point here we're going to raise our speed square up until we're level right about there and it's looking to be in between a two and a three um, pitch on here i can't tell exactly uh, so about 11 and a half degrees so typically your roofs are not going to be between two and three it's going to be a two three whatever it is it's going to be a solid number um, so this is helpful when trying to determine the pitch of an existing roof all right guys that's it for this video those are some of the more common things that you can do with the speed square um, there are some other things you can do, like use it to make a circle, but uh, typically that's not what I use the speed square for. But let me know in the comments below what I missed and what you use the speed square for that I didn't cover in this video. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And until next time, take care and God bless.